Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. In this series, we're gonna walk through basic workflows using R2 for reverse engineering. The reason for this series is because finding all of this information in one place is non-existent. So hopefully this saves you some time learning R2. I'll push these videos out over the next couple weeks. Hopefully you find them useful. If you do, please subscribe and like the video as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into it. The first thing you'll need to do if you want to follow along is grab the code for this video. So if you head over to the GitHub linked below and grab the r2walkthrough.c, this is just a simple program that takes a password and makes some decisions. We're going to use it for walking through the r2 functionality. So grab that and then open up a terminal. Let's compile the application with GCC. We should have an ADA out in the directory, which is the default for GCC. We can run that with dot slash a dot out and we get a login prompt. We'll type in test and we get access denied. So now let's open up this binary in R2 and we'll take a look at the interfaces and some simple analysis to start. So we'll say R2 a dot out and we're at the entry point of the application. The first thing I usually like to do is run the analysis on the binary. This is much like when you start Ghidra or Ida and it asks you if you want to analyze the binary. You can do this with the following command. So with the AAA, we analyze stuff like the flags and we're parsing C++ variables, etc. If you want to get more information on these commands, you can always type a question mark after them. So a question mark and you'll see here a analysis information, AA, analyze all, or if we want more information about analyze all, we can hit a question mark, and then we see AAA, and you can see exactly what that is. So you can always do that with any of the functionality within R2. You can put a question mark after it to get a little bit more info. Next thing I like to do is take a look at stuff like imports, exports, basic information, symbols within the binary. This usually gives me an idea of the functionality and use. For example, the uses of encryption or imported API calls. We can do this with the I commands for info. So for example, I capital I will give basic information such as this is an ELF 64. We compiled this with GCC. We're using Little Indian. This is all good information to have before you get going. You'll also see that this is not stripped, meaning that there's gonna be symbols within the application. That also helps us. We can take a look at these symbols with IS, and we get a look at function names, for example, check password, or the imports like import puts, etc. We could take a look at the imports directly with II. And these are all the imports in the application. For example, fgets, which gets strings, string compare, which compares strings, puts, which outputs the strings. But we don't see any other, you know, functionality such as encryption or, you know, API calls, etc., such as like virtual alloc or other stuff you'd see in a Windows binary. It's a pretty simple application, ELF64. We can also look at the exports if this was, say, a DLL and we wanted to get information on the functionality that was exported with IE. We'll get a list of those there. And then another useful thing, especially if this was, say, malware and you wanted to check if it was packed, is we can use the IS command, I capital S, and type in entropy. And we'll get a list of the entropy for each of the sections. And usually if this is packed or compressed or encrypted, we'll get a higher entropy like a 7, something like that. Here we'll see 1.5, 4.2, 4.2, 3.8. So these are all pretty low entropy because this is not a packed binary. But if it was packed, say for example some kind of packed malware, we would first have to reverse and unpack this. And then we can analyze the code directly. In this case, we can analyze it directly because it's not packed. So from there, we're going to check out stuff like interesting functions and strings seen within the binary. This will give us further information on what's going on in the binary after we run the analysis and check the basic info. So we can get a list of the functions with analyze function AFL. This lists out the functions. We can see our entry point where we started, which is where we are right now, 0 or 10C0, 10C0. 
We can also see main. We can see a check password, and then we can see stuff like fgets. We really don't care too much about those. Those are just imported libraries. But we could check out the main, which is located at 1243, by typing s main, which I believe stands for seek main. And then you'll see the address down here change, 1243. So in here is likely code that we wanna check out. If you wanna take a look at the disassembly and dive deeper into the specific functions and operations, you can print out the assembly instructions with PDF and you'll get all the disassembly there for main. And we can follow this and dive deeper if we want. Or we can take a look at in different views. So for example, if we type in shift V and get a capital V, we hit enter we're gonna see different views. Now we can scroll through these views with a P or an uppercase P, depending if you wanna go in forward or reverse direction. So we type in P. If we typed in uppercase P, we'd go back. So P, P, type it over and over again, we get different views. For example, this kind of looks like GDB if you had a plugin installed where we can see our registers up here and we can see the disassembly. And then we could kind of go through this for example, we can scroll down into a function. For example, we get to a check password function. We could just hit enter here. And now we're within this check password function, which is pretty cool. And we can see the disassembly for that. And if we type in U, we'll hop right back into the main function. We can get out of what we just jumped into. So that's all pretty cool. We can scroll up and down. I'm scrolling up and down right now, by the way, with the up and down arrows. Another thing you can do while you're in the view mode is hit shift V again and we get graph mode. So this is exactly like what you would see in something like Ida where we're in graph mode. We can also switch back and forth with the space bar, just like that. So if we scroll down to something like check password again and we hit the space bar, we would get the graph mode of that and see the different directions the program can go based on the input that's in and the decisions that it's making. So this is all the viewing functionality. If we type in Q, we can hop back through the view modes, hit Q again, we're back into the command line. And also it should be noted if we went back in again and we were in here, if we hit shift colon, kind of like uh, within Vim, we get a command prompt down here and we can actually type in stuff down there as well. So you can escape out of there, hit quit, quit again, and now I'm back in here. So that's just like basic navigation of the interface. There are some other visual modes such as V exclamation point. This kind of looks like your Ali debug or your X32, X64 interfaces. We also have some menu drop downs for different things for debugging. You can change the views in here. So if I start changing stuff, you'll see the background change. So you can play around with that. We're actually gonna have a whole video on debugging where we'll go through this. So this is one interface for that. If I hit the Q command and get out of there and type in V again and type in P, you'll also see this one is pretty good for debugging as well. And once we start the debugger, it'll show us where we're at and we can do various things with it. Um, that's all I wanted to show for this video. In the next video, we're gonna take a little bit more look at how to analyze the functions and hop around in here and check out the strings. So if you like this video, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.